Okay, so this morning we'll do uh, breathing, warm ups, Thai Sabaki, pick up on where we did uh, last week, and continue on with Oken and Makazashi. Okay, this time, bring your weight a little bit forward towards your toes and then a little bit back into your heels so your toes are light enough you can wiggle. Forward, back. This time, change your breathing pattern to, for me, that's going to mean inhaling to the back and exhaling as I come forward. Sense how that, how that is for you. And then return to the first pattern. For me, that's inhaling as I go forward, exhaling as I go back. This time, shift your weight into, this is my left foot. And then shift your weight into the right foot. Inhale. And then exhale. Inhale. And exhale. So come to one foot. Sense yourself here. This foot is light, light enough contact that you could just tap your foot lightly. And then return to center. That's the exhale. Inhale as you come over to this foot now. This one is light enough, you can tap it lightly. And return to center. This time, bring your weight into the left forefoot and then diagonally come across and put your weight more in the right heel. So diagonal direction into the front forefoot and then back into the right heel. The left forefoot, sorry, left forefoot to right heel. So I'm making this movement kind of big so that you can see, but now I'm going to make it subtle. So it's all happening in this very small space, but you can sense when your weight is 
more in that left forefoot. Sense how the ball of your foot, the pad of the foot is imprinting heavily into the ground. And the back heel at this point is very light. Then shift your weight back into your right foot. Sense how the heel sinks deeply into the mat and suddenly the left foot is very light. You could swivel on it if you needed to. Left forefoot to right heel. Now try to drive that movement from your ankles. So it's like your whole body is it's almost like a tree trunk. It's, you're not shifting from your hip or your ribs, but keeping this kind of pull and think of steering from your feet so your ankles are very involved. Settle in the middle, in the center. All right, now bring your attention to the other diagonal. We're gonna work with the right forefoot and the left heel, right? It's a subtle movement, so I'm just making, I'm kind of exaggerating into this foot, back to this. But keep it within a small range as if you're, you're just standing on a dinner plate here, shifting your weight to one foot and then the other along this diagonal. Notice when you want to breathe. Do you inhale as you come forward and then exhale as you go back? Or is it maybe just the opposite for you? Do you inhale as you go to the back heel and then exhale as you come forward into the right forefoot? Are you holding your breath? <laughs> okay, this time, when you come back into the left heel, come forward into the left forefoot. Then cross over to the right forefoot. Shift back to the right heel then over to the left heel. So you're drawing a, a little box. From heel to heel, up to the forefoot, cross over to the other forefoot, back to the heel. And now let's shave the corners off so that it's, it's a little more circular. Like the trees swaying and wind. And then pause and change the direction. So the whole sole of your foot stays in contact with the mat now. But you can sense when your weight shifts over and imprints more deeply into the mat through one part of your foot and then another. I can feel it in my heel, then into my forefoot, to the other forefoot, and the heel. Now the next time you come around to your right heel, pause and then go straight through the middle. Mark that diagonal. Then come down into the other heel and go straight through in the center to the other diagonal. So now it's a kind of a X marks the spot type of configuration. Here, here, then diagonal, diagonal. So this is a little bit more like a walking pattern, right? Walk, 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 step back, Here, 
through the diagonals, very much like that moment when you press off the back foot to shift your weight into the front foot. It's also kind of a figure eight pattern. Sense that, like you're drawing a figure eight. And now try the same pattern with your eyes closed. Does it feel different to you? Is your balance affected when you close your eyes? And then use that sensation to create that moment where you step forward. So now the diagonal, the moment where you shift your weight to that diagonal, you actually take a little step. And start again and push off. Figure eight, figure eight, and then boom. All right. See if you can reverse the whole motion so that the diagonal takes you into a backward step. All right. Find your figure eight going this direction. And when you go from forefoot to heel, that's when you step back. The other direction from forefoot to heel. And you take that right into a step. Okay. Uh, before we leave it, just start from your hummy for a moment. Feel the weight in the forward leg and then push off. Find your hummy over here. Sense a, a diagonal motion, pushing from the forefoot, the front foot. Pick up the back foot, it's light back here. Let's try the other side. Your weight is heavily, heavily uh, impacting the, the floor here through your front leg. Feel the contact with the mat through that forefoot. And then press off. To go from this point of the square to that point of the square. All right, now the reverse motion, make it just as intentional, pushing off the back foot to be here. Backward, forward. Let's do the other side. Heel the back foot. Back foot to send you forward. Feel the front foot to press you back. Keeping all of this over. Okay, let's do a little bit more uh, warm-up motions. And we'll return to that. Make sure your head Stays above your pelvis for this. All right, so when you come up, your hips unfold just a little bit faster than your knees. All right, so don't don't straighten out your knees and then pull yourself up. See if you can sense that at a subtle level. Hips unfold just a little bit quicker than the knees. The knees follow the hips. A little bit after. Now imagine you're picking something up heavy 
bring it close to you, the weight close to you, so you can make good use of your weight over the heels. And Feet under your hips. Like you're taking off a big sweater or a tight sweater. Cross yourself, extend. This time, really move your shoulder blades. You come in close to the spine, top of the head, draw your elbows in. Okay, let's do a little leg stretches. Remember this series from last time, we'll just run through it. I went through this in detail, I think last week or the week before. So, turn so your feet are parallel. Right? All right, not this position, but here. Cat. That's this part of your hip, where you want your spine to be able to fence to the stretch at the upper part of your calf. And release, relax, find solace. Change to 90 degree angle, 90 degrees. Open up your chest, shoulder blades together, sink in the front leg. Make sure your knee doesn't go past your toe. Look way out in the distance. Release the shoulder blades. Change the angle of your back foot now. Turn in your hip. Change the angle of your back foot. So now you're in more of a omni 60 degree angle. Don't just drop this. This hip behind this hip. Shrink in the front leg. Okay, other side.
So last time I went over this in depth, but today just uh, recall the three positions. You can step to this side of the line, your foot right in line with your own hip, and turn, feel your shikaku angle and the imbalance there. Got one foot on one side of the line, one here. Right. Then try stepping up right on the line. So both feet are like on a tightrope together. Pivot, sensory level of stability here. And then step just a tad over the line. Not too much, but just a little bit over the line. So as you turn, your foot is in line with your hip. Let's try it on the other side. One feels wrong. Right? You would have to really sink into your hips and bring this forward to regain stability. And that's a certain kind of exercise. So just call me 180 degree pivot. Your Chicago angle is exposed. Okay. Then right on the line. Right on the line. Feel that level of stability. And then just over the line. Just over the line. Okay. Now, feet together. Sense that your hips are square at this moment. If I had two tape measures and I measured from each hip joint to the wall out in front of me, that measurement would be the same. Try to position that, knees bent a little bit, and then draw this hip back. This entire half of your body goes back. There's some rotation in this hip joint and your spine to take this half back into home. I'm fully on the side of the line. You could think of escaping a, a Sonichi cut. And that much movement. Just taking, now paint this half in your mind, different color from this half. Hips are square, take this one back. Square and back. Keep your weight forward. This muscle is strong, it's active. active. All right, same idea, but step forward. Start from this central, 
centralized position, hips square, feet together, step forward and draw the hip, presenting this oblique angle. Okay, look for a nice 60 degree omni as you finish. You're fully on this side of the line. Together and forward. All right, combine, combine to step forward, return, and step back. Two, four. Okay, this time with your weapon, you can use Volcan or Wakazashi, doesn't matter. Feet together, raise, step back and cut. Your sword is right in line with your record line, okay? When you're in this position, it's over your head and step back. And step forward and cut. Mix it up. Sometimes back. Sometimes forward. So when you're here, your reference line, your sword, your tendon, your spine, your nose, chin, everything is lined up. Sense that central line. And then when you cut, the sword stays on that line, but you rotate. Think of your central axis through your body. Half goes back, half comes forward. You end up with your body safely off that line. That will be important when the line is actually a showman cut coming toward you. You need to get all of yourself off that line, even the shoulder, right? So there's rotation in the spine, there's rotation in the hip, and yet the sore cuts straight. Ask yourself what angle you're creating, right? Are you moving just enough to be on this side of the line? Or are you overdoing it? Are you going way over here? So for this exercise, keep it very economical, efficient, close to the line. Don't go too far over here. It's also hard to cut straight and end up over here. Go do something like this. So, for those of you who know Kyriatos, is a sense of stepping forward, presenting your Jodan target, and then stepping back 
and cutting forward. Here, I'm on this side of the line. That side of the line. Here, turn your hip to come to the other side of the line. Cut, finish the weight forward. And usually for uh, Kyriotos, I'm in right tommy here. At this point, I'm in left tommy. The target is the wrist, so it's coming at the wrist. And you shift your weight back into this leg, and then you cut with the hip turn. Make sure your foot is connected to the ground at the moment you would be cutting through. Yeah, that looks good, Anwar. Now, because we're all on Zoom, we might be opening our elbows a little too much just to be able to see. I'm trying to see you, you're trying to see me. But remember that in sword work, you want your elbow oriented forward, right? If you were going to throw a ball or a dart, I'm not good at darts, but you need the elbow out in front, not like this. So similarly, that elbow and then the elbow is out in front. Okay, so this little exercise we just worked on, coming forward or back, is uh, part of a very old Saburi set that you can find in Cycle Shenzhen's books. Coming forward, coming back, and we're just going up and down. But there's another version where you, you turn the sword, you come up. Right? So let's look at that. Here, my palms up. If I were to get out a triangle, this should be 60 degree angle, 60 degrees. Turn from your elbow, turn the whole thing over. Still 60 degrees. All right, so if I do it in the air, this, this, I do it here. So this way, 60 degrees, turn it over, still 60 degrees. So be careful that you're not doing something like this. You're not turning the pit in a little keyhole, right? Because that starts to distort your wrist. Keep your wrist, we say neutral or flat, right? Not this way or that way for this exercise. 60 degrees, turn it over. Check it out. So a small movement here in the elbow results in a larger movement out at the end. You can think of turning the pages of a book, or if your weapon is longer, hip to hip. So uh, Kevin, your, your excursion here, or the amplitude is really big. See if you can think of going from this, this hip joint to the other hip joint. No, the tip, the tip in line with this hip joint. All right? You're on the airplane, on the little aisle between the seats. Don't hit any of the people. Just go from one side of the aisle to the other. Yeah. You should be able to do that even if your uh, weapon is long. This hip to that hip. Just that wide. Just that narrow. Here to here. All right, now imagine shoulder to shoulder, so just a little bit wider. And now just to compare, go ahead and, and make it too wide, way over there to way over there. All right? So we don't generally do that. You keep it narrow. Partly because the tip is in front of you, it's between you and me. Now, if I go over here, I've suddenly created an opening. I'm open. 
but here, not so open, right? So we say sometimes, keep the tip in the frame, in the frame of your body. Think of shoulder to hip in this frame, this space. It's protecting you and it's more threatening to your uh, practice partner. Right? You're keeping them maybe at the throat, maybe at the sternum, Shomenuchi, shoulder to shoulder, hip to hip. So imagine that. Imagination is an important part of your practice. Part of imagination is part of the, the development of the martial arts, to be able to imagine clearly. So imagine taking the tip to a point right in line with your hip, that position in space, and then over to the hip. Hip, 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 hip. You're turning your hand over. So the motion is in this little joint. Your elbow, there's a slight motion in the shoulder, but it's not like this, right? Your elbow stays in the same parking spot in space, and you just turn over. That's it, Kevin. Nice. And be careful you don't make the too loose here, Nathan. And it's not blip, blip, blip. That's too much. Keep the integrity of your wrist. So you turn the whole piece, the entire forearm and hand as one unit turns over. Turns over. Yeah. All right. And then when you're at home, um, I, it's just kind of lame, but you can find something to put on the end of your weapon so that you can really imagine taking that towel and putting it in a particular spot. Oh, right there. Is that in line with my hip? Oh, yeah. All right, maybe you have something more fun or creative to work with. Send it there. Right there. If you turn it and you find that it fell off right in front of you, then something's wrong. If you turn it and you send it, woo, that's not good. So you can work with a, these external references, get creative, create an opportunity to really bring your imagination into life and to check it out. Check out the relationships, the angles, and the results of what you're doing. So this becomes important when you want to uh, create an opening with your partner. So now, take a look at the relationship between left and right in a, You can do this in a way where your right hand is really doing the drive, turning it over. Up, up, up. You can do it in a way where your left hand is really doing the drive, turn with the left. Okay? Now, if the left and right are not well calibrated, then they can be fighting against each other, right? They get wobbly kind of results. Maybe the left hand is going at one speed, the right is going at a different speed. So what you want to do in your practice is to work on the left side really driving the motion. And the right side is a passenger. It doesn't get in the way. It's there, but it doesn't get in the way. They're not the right hand, if the right hand's driving more than the left, it can look like this. You get this kind of result, the tip goes too far away. These are typical errors that we see, all right? Think of the left. Use the little finger, little finger, ring finger, middle finger, first finger, that feeling to turn it over. The left, the left. So it's a, it's a medial kind of motion. You're rotating in toward your center line. That turns it. And the right goes to the right. It's the passenger. And then check it out. What is the level of uh, muscular activity in your right side? Your left hand is really doing the driving. Can you feel a softness through here? 
relaxation, a suppleness. Now change it up. Actually use your right hand on purpose. Make that the driver. Can you feel something different going on through here? So you want to come to a place where both sides of your body are working together. For a long time, we say keep working on the left because most people tend to overwork the right. So we say use the left, use the left. And in something like some of our forms with the right, your right hominy, you need to make good use of the hip and the left half of your body. Keep the T, don't, don't drop the T off your shoulder. Keep the epaulets even here. But use your hip. So now from Hami, think of pivoting in that back foot like we talked about in uh, prior class. This hip comes forward. And the left hand turns over. So you go from Hami to square. Sense that relationship. How they can work together. From the foot, the hip, the hand turning over, but the shoulders stay level. Stay level. So there's a transfer emotion in the transverse plane. And that could be the beginning of stepping back into harmony. From harmony, hip. Now I'm on this side of the line. Right side of the line. Turn. I'm on the left side of the line. So the more you can work on this relationship between what's happening at the hand, the elbow, the hip, the, the, the foot, all in service to one cohesive motion. Now go ahead and open this up. Right hand palm up, left hand palm down. The tip is in line with my hip. And turn the page of the book. Feel the power of the hip turn. And the pivot in the foot is contact. Here, here. Step back, make sure you're fully off the line. So let's take it into our, um, I think of it as psychosensitive exercise, where it's, he doesn't own it. Here, feet together, knees a little bit supple. This, from here, turn it over, come up to the top of your head and cut. Turn it over, come up to the top of your head and cut. All right, so now take that motion into the hummy. So you come up and cut. Come up, cut. You're turning it over, bring it up to the top of your head. Keep the elbows heavy and forward. Don't, don't pitch them out too much. Keep them here, like you're throwing a dart. Now, in this exercise, it's very constrained. We're working around a, a tight line, keeping your body here in the middle. So for this exercise, when you bring your hand up, just like you're going to put your hand on the top of your head, the elbow, the forearm is in line with your body. Not here, but here. So in this case, there's a loop of my arms, and my head goes right through that loop. I raise the loop of my arms, 
and my head goes through it. And this little part in between my two hands, that spot right there, is lining up with the center. Center line on the top of my head. Keep it narrow. Hip, shoulder, foot, all off the line. Stepping back. All right, now how about stepping forward? And it's completely off the line. So now as you bring the foot back, that's when you gather it up to the top of your head. Turn. You have to shift your weight now from this foot to this foot. Step forward and cut. Come back. Gather this entire half of your body. Use your hip. Bring yourself here. My weight's on this foot. I'm going to change my weight and come here. All right, how about a little of each? Come to the center, balance, you could go back, or you could come forward. Change it up, sometimes forward, sometimes back. And when you're in the center, there's this moment where you kind of change your weight from one foot to the next. It's very subtle, but to exaggerate for you to see, I'm, I'm actually standing on one foot and then coming to the other foot. I don't know if you've ever seen a, a, a cat waiting for dinner to kind of shift from one foot to the other in anticipation. I don't know if that's a good analogy, but sense that weight shift. Here. Here's the transition. When does that transition happen? Make sure the lower body is stably supporting the moment of the cut. So don't hurry the cut. Right? Think of the cut happening almost last. Sometimes people get in a hurry. The body has to catch up. Then you get shearing forces through different parts of your body. So save the moment. Don't, don't be in a hurry to cut. Get everything organized to support that cut. There's a sense of the hip turn. But it's not floating in the air. It's connected to the ground. It's connected, but it can swivel. Question? When do you use distraction? Is it what you're going to, what you're going to move or so you are returning? This exercise, it's, it turns while you're in the center here. So okay. then, which way does which way do you choose? Well, if I come up this way, this is going to come around, and I'm going to be on the left one. Now I'm going to turn. I mean, usually you're covering this way, not that way. Here, I'm going to finish right. There are some situations where you create the opening here, but then you usually don't come to the other side. Usually you do something else. Yeah. So there's a certain, I just, that's a good question, it, there's a certain tension between these, these solo exercises and then how it actually is applied to various partner forms. You know, if you play music, you might do an exercise that has nothing to do with being fabulous music, but it's really helpful in, in uh, learning how to work your fingers in a particular sequence, right? Working scales, there's, there's a certain amount of work we do for, you think of it as conditioning. And then you go to apply it to a form, well, okay, it's not exactly the same. Um, a lot of these solo exercises working with an external line, 
we're introducing a certain constraint to study how we move our body around that line. Right? But then you get into a, a dynamic partner exercise, and the line is dynamic, it's moving. Right? So then certain things change. So in, in one sense, it doesn't matter as long as you know what you're doing. <laughs> if your study is, okay, this hip, centralize, and then change weight so I'm completely on this side, well, then I'm going to alternate each time. But if I went here, I could imagine this is an opening I'm doing, and then I'm going to come to this side of it. So your imagination really factors in. And if you don't have a lot of experience with partner exercises, it's kind of hard to imagine a scenario really clearly. So that's where a solo exercise where you just you just codify with certain rules, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go from this side to this side and alternate and that's it. And then your set practices. Am I really alternating each side? Am I doing what I intend? Good question. Thank you. What are we at? Oh my goodness, it's time. Okay, so um, you have, just to quickly review, things you can do at home with the wakasashi is just up and down, working the line, stepping back, centralize, get used to this symmetrical feeling through your feet, knees, hips central line, and then take it into Hami and check out your body alignment, where your weight is relative to that constraint, your reference line. Doing it, going forward, going back, this way, this way, This way, all the way through to the other side, and you step forward and step back. There's a moment when everything centralizes. That's that moment. So we're kind of freeze framing and spotlighting that moment. Are you really balanced here? Is everything lined up well to move through? And then turn, organize this motion. There's a lot more to work with on that. Today we just worked on sense of turning, rotation, and bring your head, your head through the loop, the loop over your head. But again, in different forms, you may bring the loop, you may bring it over here, you may bring it over here, you may Stay here, but move your sword this way. You may move your body and have your hands central, central to your center. Okay. We should probably finish. Can you know the today. stepping forward one? Uh, I'm going to turn the recording off, bow out and turn the recording off. If you want to hang out a minute, I'm happy to take questions or okay. comments after. That's Let's go ahead great. and bow out at this point. どうもありがとうございました。